Okay, today we're going to take a look at graphing linear equations that are in standard form. And before I go through a first example here, I have standard form written out, ax plus by equals c. All right, I wrote the a, b, and c in a different color because those are going to be our numbers. All right, as you can see over here, uh, negative 2 is a, 3 is b, and 12 is my c. All right, now, a lot of times uh, teachers will say, oh, well, if you've got it in standard form, then just solve for y and rewrite into slope-intercept form, and then you can easily graph the equation. All right, and that is true, and that is a valid method. All right, if you are good at memorizing, there are some formulas that go along with standard form where you can graph it really quickly. All right, the x-intercept, when an equation is in standard form, can be found by taking c over a. So c over a, and that's going to real quickly give you your x-intercept. All right, the formula for the y-intercept is c over b. So c divided by b, all right, if it turns out to be a whole number, it makes it really, really nice. You can find that y-intercept really, really easy. All right, you may also find the slope for an equation in standard form by using negative a over b. So negative a over b, and then just simplifying. All right, um, any two of these will be able to let you graph the equation. If the x and y-intercepts both turn out to be um, whole numbers, then you could just use the x and y intercept. If maybe, say, the x intercept turned out to be a whole number, but then when you calculated the y intercept, it was a, a fraction, you wouldn't necessarily want to do that. You would want to use the x intercept as a whole number and then go and use the formula for the slope and then run your slope from that y, or yeah, from that x intercept. Okay, so um, using the formulas, if you are good at memorizing, um, formulas for different things, then this is much quicker, I think, than trying to solve the equation for y and running it in slope-intercept form. All right, so for this first example here, I've got negative 2x plus 3y equals 12. All right, so a is negative 2, b is 3, and c is 12. Okay, so before I actually um, attempt to graph this, I'm going to go ahead and find all three of those very quickly, um, and then we'll decide what we're going to use from that. All right, so for my x-intercept, all right, the formula says c over a. So c over a, my c is a 12, my a is a negative 2, so 12 divided by negative 2 is a negative 6. So my x-intercept is going to be 6 on this graph. Okay, let's go through and find the y-intercept. All right, the formula for the y-intercept is c over b. So c over b, my c value is 12. My b value is 3, 12 divided by 3 is a 4. All right, so both those turned out to be whole numbers. All right, so um, technically that's all I'm going to need to graph this because I'm going to be able to graph those two points very, very easily. All right, however, let's go ahead and look, and this is a good way to verify. My slope formula is negative a over b. All right, and a is already a negative, so I'm going to have negative, negative 2, and then b is 3. So negative times negative is going to give me a positive. I'm going to have a positive 2 thirds slope on this. All right, so like I said, I could choose to just put these two points on the, the graph and graph it. I could choose to put the x-intercept on and then run the slope. I could choose to put the y-intercept on and then run the slope. Either way is going to work. All right, so let's put a little piece of graph paper down here so that we can graph this. All right, I think since uh, my x and y intercepts are whole numbers, that's what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to put an x-intercept at negative 6, so I'm going to go to the x-axis, and I'm going to go to negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, so there's my x-intercept on this graph. All right, then I'm going to go to the y-intercept. I'm going to go to the y-axis and put a um, dot on 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, and looking at this now, this is going to give me a positive slope. All right, and after we draw the line, then we're going to be able to verify that it's got a positive slope of 2 thirds. Okay, let's put the line on. All right, and then if I wanted to check, all right, I should be able to generate a slope, positive um, 2 thirds slope. So up 2 and over 3, 1, 2, 3, and yep, there it is. It does have a slope of 2 thirds. So I did the rise of 2, the run of 3, there's my positive 2 thirds slope. All right, but this is much quicker than trying to solve the equation for y and graphing in slope-intercept form. All right, um, again, x-intercept can be found by c divided by a. I kind of remember that because it's always c divided by whatever the x-coefficient is. All right, y-intercept, c divided by b. Easy to remember because it's dividing by whatever's in the uh, front of the y and then slope negative a over b.